Right at the southern tip of Europe, there's a small city under a massive rock, and it's British. So why is Gibraltar so strategic? Well, this is the most southern point of Europe, and to the north you can see the rest of Gibraltar and its famous rock. Beyond that you have Spain, and then to the south, this is the Strait of Gibraltar, where half the world's seaborne trade still come through. And behind the clouds, only about seven or eight miles, that's Africa, it's Morocco. Okay. Let's go and find some monkeys. A little about Gibraltar then, it's, a, it's quite a small city. It's got a population of around 30,000. It's, its main industries are tourism, obviously, for the rock and, and the rest. You've got the, the ships that come in because of how perfectly placed it is down here at, on the southern tip of Europe. And you've also got casinos and betting. And if you look behind the runway just there, just the other side of that runway, is where the, the border is, just beyond the, the terminal building, the border to Spain. And oh yeah, there's the UK Armed Forces. Walking around in the, in the streets down into Gibraltar, it's quite funny because on the one hand you've got this Spanish architecture, this European amazing architecture, but on the other hand you've got these British things like the post boxes, the phone boxes, you've got chippies and you've got pubs. So why is this rock on the edge of Europe British and where do the monkeys come in? So Gibraltar was originally captured by the British in the Spanish War of Succession and at the end of that war, as part of the peace process, it was, it was given to Britain forever and uh, a few years later the Spanish were back and the city was under siege and that's when the, the population start digging into the tunnels um, and that's the creation of the siege tunnels. Ever since Gibraltar became British, it's been a really important place. And the amount of guns and defences, cannons, it's all evidence of that. The longer you stare at a cliff like this in Gibraltar, the, the more kind of holes and openings you start to notice with uh, gun emplacements and, and defensive positions. What does that have to do with monkeys? Well, nothing yet, but I'm getting to that. So these monkeys that you saw jumping on my camera bag, they, um, they're called Barbary macaques and they're native to Northern Africa. Now obviously between Northern Africa and us, there's a fair amount of water. So how did they get here? Well, no watch out behind you, Matt. It's about to jump on your bag. How did they get here? Well, no one really knows. No one knows how long they've been here. But um, their story has kind of become linked with Gibraltar's. 
from Gibraltar, aircraft which had been brought by ship from Britain and reassembled on the rock were flown off to Tunisia. Nearly 1,500 planes reached the front by this route. Planes based at Gibraltar flew over to give extra insurance for the success of the operation. In the Second World War, most of the civilians were evacuated from here and the whole place became a kind of military outpost with um, tunneling starting once again into the rock. And it was to house ammunition and, and fuels and hospitals, offices, and it's kind of made the rock now, it's almost like a bit of a Swiss cheese. So what about the monkeys? Well, there's this story, a legend really, that as long as there's monkeys in Gibraltar, it's gonna be British. And while that might sound like a, a silly story, towards the end of the Second World War, when, when the rock had been bombed and the numbers of monkeys were so low, Winston Churchill actually sent a telegram because he obviously believed this legend and he sent a message saying that the numbers should be increased. Nowadays this rock is still really strategic with half the world's seaborne trade passing just there and the monkeys, they're not going anywhere. Gibraltar. 